Hello, gang. Hello, hello. I hope you are well. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hey, Amy. Oh, I've been, you've been on my heart all morning. I am hopeful for you that uh, you find some way ahead here and that uh, you get some healing. This has been entirely too much for sure. So, really, I'm glad you're here. Glad you made it in. Morning, John. Listening while driving. Very good. Good morning. How are you, everybody? How are you? How are you? Good morning, Sherry Lad. Yeah, what a couple of weeks it has been. My goodness. I keep thinking you're you're uh, better, a little, you know, you're headed in the right direction and I'm sure you do too and then something else. It's and that that kind of thing is so wearying. It's so tiring. And and uh, I can't imagine. So really pray for, praying for healing for you. Really. Good morning, Irene. Hello, Robin. Glad you're here. Welcome. Hey. That woman looks like my wife. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. How are you today on this Thursday? She was awful. Lots of rest and bad time. <laughs> bad day TV time. Oh gosh, yeah, that sounds like a that's not even like a punishment in itself for sure. Good morning, Priscilla. How are you this morning? I'm so glad you're with us. Chilly, huh? Oh, that's not good. I never like to hear your weather being bad because I know it's going to be our weather in a day or two. So, um, good morning, Linda. Hope you're well. Uh, between you and Robin, I can get a pretty good uh, weather forecast out of what's coming our, down our way. So, good morning, everybody. Want to thank everybody for coming out, Linda, for your hospitality last night. Uh, if you're interested, the Bible lecture is uh, posted on the Facebook page here. So, uh, if you want to see the Bible lecture from last night, uh, we had a few technical issues, but we rallied through. So, um, um, it was kind of fun on my end, and I appreciated everyone's being there and. Uh, having a little soup together like that's man that was nice um yeah good morning donna hope you're well hope you're doing okay but, uh, it was great thanks yeah good 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 um i kind of i enjoy that kind of stuff and i rarely it doesn't you know that you don't you don't get to kind of really you know give a half hour you know or hour kind of you know more more kind of you know scholarly idea approach to stuff often so uh, it's kind of nice it's kind of fun so um yeah second covid shot yesterday arm is sore we're doing okay okay that is good that is good that is good news all right good morning everybody we'll we'll uh we'll get started this morning on this thursday the fourth day of march Good morning, Fanny Faye Davis. It is the Thursday, the fourth day of March, uh, March fourth, gang. It's all. It is not only a day, but it is a command that we might march forth today. Uh, so I uh, now I feel like I should do say something about that, but uh, I don't know where that came from. So all right, we're but we're on uh, this journey together, and I'm so glad to see all of you here. Uh, and those of you that'll catch this later, I am, I'm re it, it continues to be a joy, and I hope it's a joy for you. 
that we might have the chance to gather uh, every so often here. Uh, I want to actually uh, shift, shift things up a little bit this morning, and I actually want to start our time with prayer. Uh, Amy, who is here right now, that is, uh, she's, uh, she's in a hospital. I think she's in a hospital right now. Um, she's been having some some issues and it's been ongoing and it's really grinding her down. And I, I hope it's okay, Amy, but I really want us to pray for you. So uh, I'm gonna so let let's let's start our time with pray with prayer. God in heaven, uh, as uh, you have ordered all things and you've made all things right, we ask that you uh, hold Amy dear to you, that you give her courage and strength and resolve. Uh, that those who would care for her would know healing and grace in this time, that they'd they'd gather around her and act in the greatest and most perfect wisdom so that she can be restored to wellness in, and health and happiness and wholeness and strength and that uh, that be the great light that she is in this world. Lord, lay your hand upon her heart and give her peace that in these days she might know your love uh, and that uh, and the love of this community that surrounds her uh, with all of your prayers and all the hosts of heaven. Lord, we, we ask that your grace be upon her this day and that she may know healing and restoration. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, thank you, gang, uh, for that. I appreciate the, the indulgence, uh, because, but we are a community, and this is what communities do. When one of us hurts, we gather around one another. So this morning, I want to talk uh, to us about a uh, um, uh, partying on that, hey, good morning, Deb Votrin. That uh, I, that we're that we might uh, be a part of this party of creation. Now, what? Ha, wait a minute. I, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a year, and nothing has felt like a party. And I want to so I want to be. I want to remind you of the first miracle of Jesus. And I won't read it for you because it's a long story. But I I want to remind you that that we can we begin the entire ministry of Jesus begins with Jesus partying like a rock star at a wedding. That's how it begins. It is an invitation to a wedding party. And I think, it is my belief, that that, that motif is actually Jesus's, it sets up the entire point of what God, what God coming into the world is person, what Jesus the Christ coming into the world is was doing, what the whole thing is about, is that we are invited to the dance. We're invited to the party. That and that in that God is not uh, distant, or God's not just kind of throwing out uh, little uh, nuggets here and there, but that God is in the midst. God is creating the goodness, creating the best wine. If you remember, the, the miracle of that time was Jesus goes to this wedding and his and they run out of wine, uh, which is this violation of hospitality in the ancient world. And his mother, Mary, comes to him and beseeches him and says, says you know, you need to help these people. And Jesus is annoyed almost, but Mary says that you know that, that these people need to be helped and so jesus goes and there they bring water and he turns water into wine not just any old wine but the best wine we can feel sometimes like there is a, some niggling and some nagging and some difficulties in the midst of our days that this these are not easy days uh, and these are and that for some of us they're they're really uh, there are there are serious things weighing upon us, but the whole wide motif of creation, the whole thing that this whole thing is about, is the invitation to the wedding party. And that if we're there, we may have the experience of running out of wine occasionally. We may have the experience of having to having to beseech for for more understanding, for more goodness, but. What is grand and good and right is that we will, and we do, find some of the best wine as we continue at the party. 
the the Arabic poet Hafiz writes it this way. He says, if God invited you to a party and said, everyone in the ballroom is my, tonight, it will be my special guest. How would you then treat them when you arrived? Ah, uh, indeed, indeed. And Hafiz knows that there is no one in this world who is not upon his jeweled dance floor. Friends, there's been about 100 million people that have ever come into the world. About 100 billion people. That, that's, that's about what they say. 100 billion that have been, about 8 billion of them, a little less than a tenth of them, uh, the 7 point whatever billion that are alive right now. And that, so, so nearly a, a, a tenth, almost a tenth, a little less than that, uh, of creation of all of humanity, we have the chance to meet right now. We have the chance to encounter right now. We have the chance to be on the dance floor with right now. Now, some of them might be out there cutting you off in traffic. Some of them out there may be out there cursing at you. Some of them may be out there uh, in fear or in longing. The whole thing is the grand and great dance floor of God. And it's invitation to the wedding banquet and our invitation to party on. I know these days that they can we can feel separated, we can feel apart, we can feel like there's still the, the, the disruptions in the days uh, and that through through all of it. And even without that, we can find ourselves in the midst of of, uh, of moments when we feel disconnected, when the wine runs out. But we're in the midst of this not alone when uh we went on our honeymoon one of the places we stayed was siena and siena is this beautiful beautiful ancient italian city and uh we got the chance to stay at the monastery of saint catherine say so, uh catherine the catherine of siena was a uh 13th century uh uh, prophetess really that she was a mystic and uh, though she didn't very live very long she wrote some of the most beautiful texts about the relationship of this dance about the journeying of this of this of us in this world with our fellow dance partners with what it is to be at the divine wedding and the and that sometimes the the, the wine runs out but it is never exhausted and that as we look into the master and we look to the to the invitation to the wedding feast we look to jesus our fellow guest we look to to the moments when we have the very best of wine because the very best of wine comes after not with the date with the party that, that that's part of the story. Part of the story is is the the host who is wildly embarrassed, who is who is losing honor, who's losing face in the face of all that it, that is. His whole world really is falling apart because he's run out of wine. And it, it, it might not seem like a big deal to us, but in the, in the ancient world, the inability to to provide hospitality in the Middle Eastern world is a big deal. He's going to be embarrassed. He's going to be embarrassed and shamed in front of his whole clan and his whole family, which is essentially his whole world. And the wine comes out that Jesus has converted from water to wine, and it is the best. We think that we're in this maybe this time of scarcity, maybe we're in this time of hurting, maybe we're afraid, maybe we're lonely, maybe we're all of the things that that maybe we're in that it feels like when the wine runs out. But our invitation is to party on, to stay on the dance floor, even though maybe the DJ is changing songs with a bad segue, like me last night in the presentation. That it doesn't matter where we find ourselves, that because. Jesus is always ready to invite us into that wedding banquet and provide us with that which we need, the very best of what we need. That comes 
not at the front end, but on the but after that time of scarcity. So Catherine of Siena, we had the chance to, we actually, the little suite we stayed in was actually right above her chapel and her head was in the chapel. Hmm, that's kind of fun. So we, so literally we were there and, and St. Catherine, the icons, the, the icons and the relics of St. Catherine were, were right as a part of that place. It was really cool for me because I have always loved Catherine uh, as uh, in her writings. But this is her that and one of the things about Catherine, if you read Catherine of Siena, is that she has this way of of saying these profound and powerful truths in just like with little little pithy one liners, you know, just all seemingly almost thrown away. And yet they're almost like like Zen koans. You, but you can you can spend a lifetime kind of turning the jewel on them. And this is one of my favorites. She says all the way to heaven is heaven all the way to heaven is heaven and heaven all the way to heaven is heaven you can and you can keep turning that friends i'm not saying everything that happens in this world is heavenly we know that of the hundred billion people that have lived in this planet uh, that have that have ever existed, that you know, 70 million of them just in the last century were killed due to warfare. Not the best of days. Not everything good happens. But the dance floor, friends, is still the dance floor. Some days our toes may be stepped on. Some days our legs may be weary. Some days the party may not feel like a party at all. Some days the wine might run out and we may not have the understanding we need. We may not have the, the way that we need. We may not have the resources that we feel like we need to be able to move through and move forward with our partying on. But I would suggest to you that that is one little word from Mary away from the very best of our lives, from the very best wine, from the very best of our understanding, from the very best of our journeying. I want to offer you today that uh, this this prayer from the Valley of Vision. It's one of the it's one of the old prayers. These are again these are 400 year old plan, pr- prayers that come from our Puritan ancestors, and that uh, that we might um, that we might embrace this and hear this as the invitation to what it is. Uh, to be a part of our great end, that, that our great invitation, that we get the chance to dance with our 7.45, whatever it is, billion other dance partners in this world, that we get the, the chance to stay in, the, in this wonderful and beautiful place that sometimes, even, in, even, even at the party, we run out of wine. Even at the party, someone's niggling at us. Even at the party, we feel that our world, it may be collapsing down because the resources we thought we had there just aren't, aren't panning out or the things are falling apart. But in the end, in the end, as Meister Eckhart tells us, it is God that is at home with us. And it is we that have gone out for the walk. It's God that's at home with us and we that have gone out for the walk. Augustine says it another way. He says that that we are a part of this journey where he says that, that uh, God doesn't leave us alone in this. Uh, that because God is closer to ourselves than we are has loved that image. God is closer to ourselves than we are. If you're feeling abandoned, if you're feeling alone, if you feel like the parties run out, if you feel like the wines run out, 
I want to invite you to remember and to know and to call upon Jesus and, and to, uh, to bring a little more wine to a party if you're feeling parched uh, and to have the courage and the strength to keep partying on. Let's pray. I offer you this prayer from the Valley of Vision. Lord of all being, there is not one thing that deserves my greatest care, that calls forth my ardent desires. That is, that I may answer the great end for which I am made, to glorify thee who has given me being, and to do all the good I can for my fellow men. Verily, life is not worth having if it is not improved for this noble purpose. Yet, Lord, how little is this the thought of mankind. Most men seem to live for themselves without much or any regard for thy glory or for the good of others. They earnestly desire and eagerly pursue the riches and honors and pleasures of this life, as if they supposed that wealth, greatness, merriment could make their immortal souls happy. But alas, what false and delusive dreams are these, and how miserable ere long will those be that sleep in them for all our happiness consists in loving you and being holy as you are holy oh may i never fall into the tempters and the vanities and the sensuality and the folly in the present world it is a place of inexpressible sorrow a vast emptiness of nothing time is a moment a vapor all its enjoyments are empty bubbles fleeting blasts of wind from which nothing satisfactory can be derived. Give me grace always to keep in covenant with you and to reject as delusion a great name here or hereafter, together with all the, the pleasures or profits. Help me to know continually that there can be no true happiness, no fulfilling of thy purpose for me, apart from a life lived in and for the son of thy love. We are, friends, made that we may answer the great end for which we are made, to glorify thee who hast given me being. Glorifying God who has given us being looks a little like staying on the dance floor. It looks like continuing to party when maybe the wine has run out. It looks like this, that it is that looking in our lives and choosing the things of life, choosing the best of things, choosing the most gorgeous of things in all of our days. And in the beautiful and in the wonderful and in on the journey, we find that heaven, on the way to heaven, is heaven. All right, friends, I hope you party on today, and I hope that uh, you have a great time. Uh, if you want to listen to the lecture, it'll, it's on the Facebook page here. Uh, we will be gathering to worship on Sunday, uh, so you can gather with us here on online, or you can gather at 282 Rock Street right here in Fall River. It's, good, it's a good time, beautiful space, lots of nice people. So uh, if you want, also, lastly, just, in a, just a, a, a commercial, uh, please try it. Please like our our YouTube page. It is FCC Fall River Math. So uh, if you have the chance to uh, to subscribe to that page, all of these uh, these eleven uh, elevens that from the very beginning are up there. So if you ever want to go back and watch it, we they've been edited a little bit, so you don't have to listen to all the highs and hums and like so that uh, and they've uh, the, so. Also, our uh, sermons and everything, all, as well as our podcast on SoundCloud, uh, where all of these find a home as well. So uh, if you'd like to like some of those or subscribe to some of those, it'd be terrific to, to help to continue uh, this journey and to invite more folks to the party. 
All right, friends, that's my hope. I appreciate uh, I appreciate each one of you. Amy, you are in each one of our prayers. Uh, I, I and know that you uh, you journey not alone. That and that uh, I hear the heaviness in your in your messages and uh, of these days, and that we are with you and praying for you through this all. All right, peace and grace, friends. We will see you next week for another eleven eleven.